let's turn to, um, I want to talk about Pentecost real quick. This is, this is good. This is Acts 1, verse 6. Acts 1, verse 6. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation. It's uh, Brian Simmons' birthday today, which I don't think is a coincidence. It'll play it on Pentecost today. I texted him that this morning. I said, I don't think it's a coincidence your birthday landed on Pentecost today. I saw fresh wind and fresh fire coming on him to finish that translation. What's funny, too, is that he's like, yeah, it's funny. Every hotel that we stay in, all of a sudden, the fire alarms go off and, <laughs> and um, the fire trucks show up. I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, I don't, it's just kind of weird. And then right then, we're pulling him up to the hotel, and all of a sudden, the fire alarm goes off at the hotel, <laughs> and a fire truck starts coming down. But I just, that guy carries a baptism of fire on his yeah, life. Yeah, he does. Acts 1, verse 6. If you have it up, say amen. amen. Every time they were gathered together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is it now the time for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? And he answered, the Father is the one who sets the fixed dates and the times of their fulfillment. You are not permitted to know the timing of all that he has prepared by his own authority. But I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you will be seized with power. You will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, the distant provinces, even to the remotest places on earth. So the answer, when we are in a season of waiting, and we want to say, Jesus, is it now? <laughs> Jesus, is it now? Are you going to restore your kingdom now? Are you going to return now? Are you going to bring breakthrough to my family now? Are you going to heal me now? Are you going to bring provision now? And Jesus says, no, it's not your priority to know that. Only the Father knows that. But I promise you this. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and seize you with power. So what is the answer in the waiting? What is the answer in the unknown? It's the Holy Spirit. And we touched on it earlier when Jesus went out and he was tempted it actually says when he, he came against everything Satan threw at him with the word of God and then walked out of that wilderness endued with power. He walked into the wilderness surrounded with power, covered in power, but walked out endued with power. So seasons of temptation, seasons of frustration, or where things don't look like they're happening or where there's little fruit and you're wondering, lots of work, little fruit, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Holy Spirit is increasing over you. You're going from just covered in the Holy Spirit, surrounded by the Holy Spirit, to being infused with the Holy Spirit because you're learning how to not base your joy on timing. Base your praise on timing. I feel like any time there, there's a word of faith that's released, there should be a word on patience. I feel like if you're going to preach about faith, preach about patience. Because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And actually, I think patience is what keeps you in the place where you're like, Lord, the, I know you love the desires of my heart, but I am leaning in. I'm going to worship you in the questioning. I'm going to worship you when it doesn't look like things are happening. I'm going to trust you even though I don't see your breakthrough. I'm going to trust you. And in that, there's an increase of the spirit. There's an increase. If there was an increase on Jesus, there's an increase on us. So when Jesus said, when Pentecost, when the spirit comes on you, you're never going to be the same. So picture this. When the, when the Ten Commandments were released and Moses came down that mountain with the tablets, 3,000 people died because they had gotten into idolatry. On Pentecost, what happened? 3,000 people got saved. 
What does it say? The letter kills. The spirit brings life. And so the pillar of fire that was in the wilderness now split into tongues on each person. So there was no longer this pillar that we see and we're kind of afraid of. And I don't know, that just seems kind of scary. I love it, but I'm not sure. All of a sudden now the Holy Spirit that was the pillar split and landed on us personally. Meaning that we are no longer trying to get into the Holy of Holies. We are no longer just trying to get to church to have an encounter. That we are living in the Holy of Holies. That even when we sing, when we sing, uh, the train of your robe fills the temple. We understand that we are now the temple, that the train of his robe is filling us. That we have been filled with the very presence of Jesus. And so Peter went from terrified, (laughs) running, to now preaching boldly. I love that because it takes the pressure off of you and me. In other words, I can't drum up enough emotions. I can't drum up enough power, boldness to get up here and preach or share a word with you. This is the Holy Spirit filling me. And, and reminding me of who I am and who he is. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So it's not in our own strength. What does it say? Paul said, even in your weakness. In your weakness, he's attracted to that because in your weakness, his grace, his strength can be multiplied. And so a Christianity without the Holy Spirit is powerless Christianity. <laughs> it's impossible Christianity. The Holy Spirit hovered over the waters of the deep. And it was like the Holy Spirit was just waiting in anticipation. It had, it had covered specific people that God had chosen in the Old Testament. But when Pentecost came... It was like breakthrough because the blood was enough. The water was enough. And so now you are not, he is not, um, he's attracted to you. The Holy Spirit is just waiting in anticipation. What does it say? The whole earth is groaning in anticipation for the sons and the daughters to manifest. That is the Holy Spirit where we come to the end of ourselves And we say, Holy Spirit, fill me. Give me your strength today. Lord, give me the power to forgive. Give me the power to bless. Give me the power to speak to that person that I see at at my workplace that I know needs you. Give me the power to be bold. Give me the power to to see things the way you see them. So it's not, it's not like, oh, I have to make myself perfect to be filled with the Holy Spirit. No. The Holy Spirit is what perfects you. So we've been running from the very thing and hiding from the very thing that the nurturing, the comfort, the teaching. There is no powerful Christianity apart from the Holy Spirit. And so... This is actually the day the church was born. The resurrection, the cross, the resurrection. Pentecost is the day that Jesus said, this is the rock. (laughs) And I'm going to build my church on it. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And that was all because the Holy Spirit came and dwelled among us. What do you got? She's like, come on, come on up here. I don't want to preach alone. And then, no, I said, (laughs) I'm like, you go girl, fan that flame. Go, go. Oh, I just love what she said about the, the spirit hovering over the waters of the deep. So the spirits hovering over the waters of chaos 
do you recognize that you're mostly water? <laughs> and if you're going through something that's chaotic, that might be a blueprint. And it's actually a beautiful blueprint because the Holy Spirit is just like this, <laughs> hovering, waiting. Jesus says, or the Father says, go. Jesus, the word. Well, Jesus, I mean, you guys know what to say. The Father says, says, Jesus, basically. Jesus is the word, right? And then the Holy Spirit takes action. And it's just like a repeat. Pentecost is a repeat of what happened at the very beginning. Wow. New creation. You have, yeah, new creation all over again. The Spirit hovering over the chaos of the deep, over the waters of the deep. And then, boom, let there be light. And everything was transformed from that chaotic, dark, gloomy place to a beautiful, bright place. Desert places. So if you're in a desert season, if that's your blueprint, get happy. Yeah. Because there's a new thing that's about to be laid over you. It's called the Holy Spirit. Just like Elijah laid nose to nose, face to face, mouth to mouth. Just like God breathed into Adam, mouth to mouth. Just like Jesus said, he's breathing on the disciples. I'm blowing on you. Then what happened? The wind. The wind. The wind changes things. The Holy Spirit changes things. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses. Basically, to the ends of the earth. Mm. See, the Holy Spirit, we're not waiting for him to show up. He's already here. And when you're going through, because what I found right now, there's this tension that I'll, I've talked to a lot of different people. You have, I call it the guts over here. Mm -hmm. How many have guts going on in their life? Wave at me. You have some tensions that you're walking out right now. There's only like five. You know, five other. <laughs> Come on, be honest. But how many have a lot of glory that's happening, a lot of beautiful things that are happening as well? So there's these tensions that we walk out. And what I've been seeing is that the Lord is just producing the fruit of the Spirit in His bride. Yeah. And He's working something in us to get us to walk by faith yeah. and not by sight or what it looks like. Because the world needs peace. He goes, my peace I leave with you. Yeah. The world needs joy. Yes. The world needs these things. Mm -hmm. So let me, tell you, let me show you what happened to you. And this is the cool thing that is happening right now. It's Colossians 1. Did you know Jesus, when that spear went up into his side, hit his heart, his heart exploded in love. Blood and water flowed, hit the ground, and then there was a new voice crying out. No longer came, came an Abel, Abel mm. crying for re revenge, mm. but now, Forgiveness. now the world's like, oh my goodness, I just got a drink from the king of glory. Mm. And now the whole earth is groaning for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. So what happens is, Jesus said a little yeast goes into the dough and it begins to change things. The kingdom, a little bit of the kingdom will change, will change things. So it doesn't matter what it looks like right now in our world. Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more. So this should get us excited. Colossians 1, it says this, Even though you were once distant from him, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions... Don't you think there's a lot of evil thoughts and actions happening right now mm -hmm. in our world? Yeah. This, is what ha this is what he's doing. He reconnected you back to himself. He released his supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of his own body mm. as a sin payment on your behalf so that you would dwell in his presence. And now there is nothing between you and the Father God, for he sees you as holy, flawless, and restored. It keeps going. But my point is this. There is some yeast that's in the dough. It's called the kingdom. 
And there's things happening right now, and the Holy Spirit is on the move, and He's doing things even if you might not see it right now. Yep. I mean, testimonies are great because usually it has to do with a problem in a bad circumstance, and all of a sudden some sort of miracle that takes place, mm -hmm. and then you have this beautiful testimony that you begin to prophesy out to other people and say, Lord, do it again. I just want to encourage us that the Holy Spirit is here right now. Mm. That there is a shift at the end of the day. Mm. Jesus is coming back. <laughs> and he is already here living inside of us. It's a both and. And the Holy Spirit is here too. Why don't we all stand, I guess? <laughs> you got so. <laughs> um, so when the Spirit came, there was a wind. Say wind. Wind. And when the Spirit came, there was fire. Say fire. Fire. And when the Spirit came, there was language. Say language. Language. And when the Spirit came, there was boldness. Say boldness. Boldness. <laughs> And so I felt today like there was a refreshing wind for people that have been in the heat of the day. Yes, that's it. I felt like people have been in the heat of the day and the Holy Spirit was going to blow on you a refreshing wind today. I also felt like there has been people that have been in the fiery furnaces. You've, you've committed to the Lord that you would not bow. But in that, there's a fourth man in the fire, and I felt the consuming fire of love coming upon you. Mm -hmm. The ones who have not said yes to those things that have been tempting, that there was going to be a consuming fire that was going to land on you today. And I also felt uh, with the, the language, I felt like there was a fresh language that was going to come today that, that the world has never heard, come on. that even the church has never heard. There's a language of the Spirit, a language of love that the world is so hungry for, Amen. so thirsty for. And I felt like as we pray today to close the service, there was going to be a new language that's going to come upon you. Those of you that work in like social media, um, Christiane and Corey, I feel that over you. There's a new language that's coming mm -hmm. over you. It's a heavenly language that's going to come over you that's going to be attractive to the world. And then I felt boldness. I felt like there's people that have been under this intimidating spirit. And the word in intimidation is timid. And one of the truths the Lord showed me one day is he said, Tisha, uh, anyone will believe um, a bold lie over a timid truth. And so there's going to be a fresh, that's why boldness is so important. And I believe that's why the Holy Spirit comes with boldness, because the world needs to hear a bold truth. Yeah. Come on. Not a, not a timid truth, not a wavering truth, but a bold truth. Not an unloving truth, yeah. but a bold truth. And so let's just, let's just lift up our hands and receive from the Holy Spirit today. Those four aspects, the, the wind, the fire, the language, and the boldness. Mm -hmm. So Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. I pray for people here that have been struggling in the heat of the day. I pray for that refreshing wind of your spirit to come. Just blow. Blow in this place. Blow. Blow. That cool of the day, it's those, those garden encounters, the cool of the day where the Father walks through the garden and we get to walk with him in the cool of the day. The fresh wind coming upon you right now. A fresh intimacy with the Holy Spirit, a fresh intimacy with the Father and Jesus. The fresh wind that leads us into places and we have no idea why we're there sometimes 
And then the Lord reveals to us, this is why I've brought you to this place. We surrender to that wind. We surrender afresh to that wind, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just thank you that you are the one who brings ultimate identity into people's lives. I just saw You guys are going to begin to hear testimonies of people getting baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire outside of, mm -hmm. inside the church for sure, but outside of the church. People that you at least expect it. When the Holy Spirit gets a hold of somebody, it completely transforms their, who they are. It's like an identity transplant. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you are here. Thank you for those four points that Tisha was just talking about. Thank you for the fresh wind of your presence. I was also hearing that there's some people here that might be fighting it. Like, man, I don't know. And I just hear the Lord saying, you just need to get in the fire like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. You just need to jump in and be with the fourth man in the fire. Mm -hmm. Stop fighting it. Mm -hmm. Just jump in. Mm. So we just honor you, Father. Proverbs 4, it says, honor your Father. It says, in all of your getting, get understanding. And I'll put like an ornament, a wreath of grace on your head. Ephesians 1 says, talking about understanding, it talks about the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. It also talks about the New Testament, the mind of Christ. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. Baptize us afresh today. And if that's you and you want just a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and of a fire in your life, why don't you just come on up as just an act of faith. Just come on up here. We're just going to end the service. Arms held high. Holy Spirit, get me good. Yeah, Lord, we pray for a boldness. We pray for a courage to rise up within us, knowing that we're never alone. We don't do anything alone, that you're always with us. Father, I pray for that revelation of your love to hit us in such a way that we start speaking boldly, speaking the truth and love. I pray for the wind, the fire, the boldness, and the language to come right now, Holy Spirit. The wind, the fire, the boldness, the language. Yeah, just open up your mouth. I, I, I feel like the language is going to come out as a new language. It's a new sound. Yeah, just let the Spirit speak through you. vessel, that you're surrendering to him. Tell the Holy Spirit to possess you. Possess me, Holy Spirit. Possess me, Holy Spirit. I died with you, Jesus. And I was rose again with you, Jesus. And now I'm possessed. Possessed by another. The Holy Spirit. We surrender afresh to you, Holy Spirit. We surrender our voices to you. We repent for holding back our voices. We surrender our sound to you. 
And I break off timidity in Jesus' name. I break off intimidation in Jesus' name. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your boldness. The paresia, the ability to speak openly, unapologetically. Yeah, consume us with your fire, Holy Spirit. Consume us with your fire.